Hello and welcome to Reinfuse. Today we are playing Rex on the Sinclair Spectrum. Now this is still one of my favourite games. I got a plus three, uh, and it took a, it took a lot of getting. <laughs> so it was a lot of pocket money and birthday money and what have you saved up. And I think my mum basically put most of her bonus money in for it and. We got it slightly cheaper because we had I had an uncle who worked in the computer industry and managed to get a discount. Uh, so it took all of that for me to get a plus three. And this is one of the first games I got on it. And it was one I played more than any other as well. So yeah, it, um, <laughs> it means a lot to me, this game, actually. So uh, well, let's start by defining the keys because I am using a keyboard rather than a joystick. Uh, that's how I used to play it. I did have joysticks, I just, uh, I'd always played with keyboard because I'd had the 48k Spectrum before the plus three. I'm actually playing this on a toast rack 128k, so not a plus three. Right, so the idea is we are Rex, who is basically a, I don't know, kind of a, <laughs> a humanoid rhinoceros, I guess. I, I mean, that's kind of what he looks like. Uh, and, alright, the Spectrum wasn't really well known for its graphics. Well, not in a good way anyway. But, uh, it's quite nice to find, nice, nice definition really. You can see, more or less, that's what, that's what it's meant to be. Or maybe it's just because I know already. Right, so the idea is we are, you will have to do that. We have to fight our way through this area and we've got a shield we can put on at will but that goes down as on use and when it gets hit as well we pick our extra weapons but we don't get to use all we don't get to use those extra weapons until we pick up enough energy and we get the energy by killing things so you see little bubbles that pop up small bubbles for things like people and big bubbles for bigger things like these machines and stuff and this pad I'm standing on actually recharges your shield as well right so and the animation is really nice. Considering that, you know, the, the Spectrum, again, it wasn't really well known for its graphics. But when you shoot, like, if you shoot the guys, right, let's get this big bubble here for some more energy. And these guys will just bounce off my shield. Oops, uh, I got shot. <laughs> so now we go back, and these here are save points. So that's where you start up. Now, you lose a bit of your energy when you die, but not a huge amount which is good because it means you don't always lose the weapon that you're on. Right, so let's blow that up. You get some energy as well for killing things, but this, there we go. If we shoot this guy, you see how he flies backwards with an animation. That's quite, it's quite interesting for the for the special. Like I say, not, not a powerhouse, but fairly nice graphics. Right, we're being shot as well, so we want to be a bit careful. There we go. And this thing fires at intervals, so we can just shoot it, it when doing the intervals. Um, I have played this uh, since. <laughs> right, we're running low on shield, but that's okay. We're through the screen, hooray! And this is a, right, this is a pretty easy screen next, yep. Right, so we can use our shield just to get in here, blow this up. And we'll be well away before that guy comes anywhere near us. Yep, so here's a shield regen, so we can do this. Now, this is one of the areas that really annoys me. Because you see where the arrow is pointing there, and we have to go and blast our way through that wall. And it's just really pernickety to do. This one, not so much, because there's two areas you can stand on. There's these little creatures that you have to shoot as well, but that's fine. They haven't got much room to move in anyway. There's two paths as well. You see, we could have gone down and, and we'd have ended up on this bottom path here. Which is, again, it's a, a really a good thing. Right, so we're going to have a save point. That's good. Now we blast our way through here. Try to kill as many of these things before we open up the passage too wide. Right, and now you see we've got to jump. And if you get too close, like this, you can't actually shoot the bit that you, it's right in front of you. So there we go. Now this one is really annoying, especially since that thing's there. So now we've got to kind of jump up and, and hope to hit the right bit. We can't go down 
because that's there and it won't come up for us to shoot it. There we go. All right. So now we can do that, but we still have the problem where we can't get too close or we won't hit the thing. And there we go. So yeah, this is just uh, these are just annoying. Okay, so this is uh, we get the shield gem, but we don't need it. And this thing is slowly shooting its way through the wall, but it won't make it in time. There we go. And now we just do that. Now there's this thing which you could, I guess, get the pattern, but it's not worth it. Just put the shields on for a second and blast. All right, these. I'm never good at getting these. Oh, there we go. We've got a bonus. Yeah, so you can get bad things and good things from that. Right, so we can... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Jump up here, and then we can try to shoot this thing over here. Again, we could have continued down below and, and not even to touch any of this part, which for its time... That was pretty good branching paths, though they all go to the same place, of course. Now, sometimes you get people coming down there and you just don't get the time to do anything. Oh, yep, and this thing. Right, we've got to make sure you hit those things and they turn. Because if you don't, then it won't save your point and you'll end up going back to a point you didn't expect to go back to. <laughs> yeah. These are the, the annoying bits of this game, but they they are few and far between. All right, let's just use a shield to blow these things up. So, you see a nice big boss sprite coming through. Again, fairly impressive for uh, the Specky. Although when you see the, like the stuff they did on R type and the things, you can see the Spectrum is capable. Of, oh, that was bad. <laughs> the Spectrum is capable of uh, moving some some real screen data around. Okay, we got it. It's fairly easy, all in all. Right, again, make sure we get this. It's that animation again, it's really nice. And the, the screen, I mean, it's simple because it has to be simple for the Spectrum, but it's a, it's effective. The graphics are nicely laid out. I say it's animation when you hit them, that's so good. Get this right. There we go. We're straight up. There we are. Now we want to build our shield up, but there's going to be lots of people coming in and annoying us. Like this guy. He went down. That's good. So we can just go straight through. Okay. You don't have to kill everything. You don't. You can just. Oh, I got that timing wrong. That's fine, we survived. Let's turn around and shoot him. And they don't follow us through the screen, which is good. Now this one we definitely want to save our progress on because we will almost certainly die. There we go. Because this bit is annoying. Like we run out of shield, not good because yeah the rate that fires trying to get through and oh we died anyway I walked into the bullet yeah but we saved here so the good thing with this is we can have our shield pretty much topped up so we just run through this bit because there's a shield top up right here handy <laughs> I've got my hand resting right the toast rack you never see it so the Sinclair Spectrum toast rack it's kind of the last official spectrum that Sir Clive was had a hand in. So it's before Anstrad took over, and it's an interesting one because it it really came about because of Sinclair in Spain. The Spanish authorities had uh, this law to try and help local competition in computing where a machine had to have 128k of memory, otherwise uh, they couldn't be sold. Now, different people got around it different ways, but because Sinclair had a, a Spanish manufacturing arm, they basically just made a 128k Spectrum. They came up with a fairly um, clever memory mapping system, which allowed it to work with all the 48k games still. 
and um, and yeah, it was basically re-imported back to the UK and became the toast rack. Now, if you've never seen the toast rack before, it's basically uh, oh, ran out of shield. <laughs> it's basically a ZX Spectrum Plus, a uh, 3AK Plus, but with a, a giant heatsink on the side. And it definitely needs that heatsink because I've got my hand currently resting on it and it is getting warm already and I literally turned this Spectrum on just before I started recording. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting machine though and it's, it's relatively rare for Spectrums because it was so f late in the day. I mean, it shares a lot of its DNA with the well, like rather, the plus two and the plus three share quite a lot of its DNA. They have more compatibility issues because of some of the other changes that were made to make them compatible with the various tape systems and uh, disk drives that are added to them. But there's quite a lot of DNA that, that is shared. Like the ULA is basically, and the plus two and the 128K is effectively the same with a few changes. The, the, yeah, there is one small problem in this game is that some of the bullets are so small you just can't see them. <laughs> but to be fair, uh, I'm probably unlikely to get much further than this without using cheats anyway. And I do not have anything to cheat plugged into this machine. I have a div MMC plugged in. I don't think you do cheats on div MMC, can you? I don't think so. But it's just that the hitboxes as well on this game were just amazing. You really can just fire a shot over someone and just miss them. Come on. That's it, jump. I'm just going to use my, <laughs> my shield. <laughs> It does mean I've not got very much shield left and you kind of really definitely need your shield for this bit. Oh my god, there was too much going on. <laughs> right. Penultimate life. Yeah, so the, the, the spectrum was... big part of my life. I learned to program on the Spectrum. I mentioned this uh, in the unboxing when I got the 48k Spectrum I think it was. But the uh, yeah, the Spectrum was where I learned to program and uh, it made you believe I wanted to be in the games industry which actually being in the games industry for a short period proved that I, I really didn't. <laughs> so I went for corporate applications instead because um, yeah, it's slightly less depressing as anyone you talk to in the games industry is probably will probably tell you. Anyone that stays in the games industry really genuinely does love being in it because you wouldn't stay in it otherwise. <laughs> so that guy's just shooting over my head there. I'm gonna shoot his legs as he lands. We can kind of oh almost made it. <laughs> Right, well that's Rex. It's a genuinely good game. Uh, try it out on emulation if nothing else. But if you've got a Spectrum and you can get it, definitely get it. It's it's a fun game. It just moves well. For the Spectrum, which is uh, not a machine gifted with graphics, it looks really good. The, the the designs and the animation just make up for the lack of colour. Although, say lack of colour, we're looking at the screen. There's plenty of colour. They've made some very good and intelligent uses of colour just to make up for the Spectrum's colour clash issues. Yep. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.